Hey, hello friends and welcome to Rector Portal Studio and in this video we're going to be taking a look at extension methods in Dart and how they can be useful in writing clean and efficient code in Dart and how they can also be used in writing reusable and customizable widgets in Flutter. By the end of this video, you'll have the knowledge to write your own extensions to use in all your Flutter apps and make your code look more concise and readable. So first, let's take a look at what are extension functions and how they can be used. Right now, I'm in a new Dart window in which I just have this main function. In this, I have a new variable called person name and which has a value of James. In the next line, I'm printing out that person name and this gives us with a value of James. Let's say we have a problem here and we want to make the first letter of this James capital. Well, the most common approach for this would be to create a function which would return us a string and this function will take an argument of a string. Let's name this data. In this function, what we'll do is we'll return a new string and in this string, we'll take the first letter of data and convert this to uppercase. Along with this, we'll attach the rest of the string by using data.substring and give this a starting index of one. To use this function, we'll have to go to the print statement and here, instead of printing out the person name, we'll have to use the capitalized first function and give the person name as an argument to this function. Now, if we run the code, you can see that the first letter of this James is capital. Now along with this, let's say we have to create a function that checks whether a string is a valid email or not. For this, what we'll have to do is we have to create a new function that returns boolean and let's name this is email valid. And in this also, we'll have to pass in the string of email. And for the body of this function, we'll have to check this email against a regular expression. And the code for this function looks something like this. In this, we're creating a new object of regular expression and we're checking if this email matches the pattern of the regular expression. Now to use this function, what we can do is we can come up to the main function and here we can create a new print statement and in this we can call is email valid and we can pass it a string value. At this point, if I run the code, you can see that this print statement here returns us with a false. Now let's change this to james at the rate gmail.com and now if I run the code, we get a true. In the same way, you might have to create a lot of functions according to your own application needs. And for using these functions, you have to pass the string as an argument to these functions and then get the response and use it accordingly. Although this is a common approach, but instead of this, wouldn't it be better if you could write something like this? In this, we're using capitalized first as if it was a function of the original string class. Well, this is exactly the kind of functionality that we can get by using extension methods. Here, We'll be creating an extension of the original string class and we'll be adding these functions to it and then we'll be able to use these functions as if they are part of the original string class. So let's create some space up here and here I can write extension and I have to pass in the name of the extension. So let's name this custom string and we have to mention the name of the class on which we're creating this extension. So for this, I'll pass in on string. Now we have to create the body of this extension and in this, I'll add the function of capitalize first. In this extension, you can write code as if you're in the original string class. So in the capitalize first function, we don't have to pass in the argument. And also, instead of this data, I can pass in the reference to this. Now let's remove the second print statement and run the code once again. Here you can see that the capitalize first function is working as expected and we're using this function as if it was the part of the original string class. We can do the same thing for the is email valid function and we can take this and put it inside the extension. Now, we don't have to pass in the email and instead of this, I can just pass in this. To use this function, I'll go up in the main function and here I can use the print statement and in this, I can write person name and we can use the is email valid function. And you can see that we can get the hints as if it was the part of the original string class. I'll use the is email valid function and run the code once again. And here you can see that because James is not a valid email, we get a false here. And if we change this James to james at the rate gmail.com, we can see that the output of is email valid is true. So with this, you have seen that with the help of extension methods, we can write our own functions as if they were part of the original class in the first place. Although you can see the similarities between this extension and the inheritance concept of object-oriented programming, but this is not the same thing. We're not wrapping the string class with another class to add these functions. We're actually adding an extension to the string class and writing these functions as if they were part of the original string class. Now, let's take a look at some Flutter code and see how you can use extension methods to write more clean and easy to use widgets 
and make your Flutter code more concise and readable. Right now, I'm in a simple Flutter app in which I just have this my home page. And in my home page, I have a scaffold. In the body of scaffold, I'm returning a text. This text is covered by a transform. And with the help of this transform, I'm scaling this text to twice its size. Along with this, I have wrapped the transform with a center so as to display the text in the center of the screen. Well, with the help of extension functions, we can write all this in a single line of code and make the code more readable and concise. For this, I'll go to the lib folder and here I'll create a new dart file. I'll name the file custom extensions and in this file, we'll create a new extension for the base widget class. For this, what I'll do is I'll import the material.dart and now I'll create a new extension and I'll name this custom extension. And we want to create this extension on the base widget class. And in this extension, we can create as many functions as we want and they will all be available for any widget that we use in our application. Because in the end, all widgets extend this widget class. For now, I'll create a simple function to center the widget. And this function will return a widget and I'll name this center. In this function, what I'll do is I'll return the center widget and for the child of the center widget, I'll pass in this. Now to use this function, what we can do is we can go to the main.dart file and here I can import the custom extensions.dart file. And now let's create this code once again. First things first, I'll create a new text that says Retro Portal Studio. Now with the help of extension function that we wrote, to center this text, we can simply do dot center. And now if I run the app and go to the emulator, you can see that we have the text of Retro Portal Studio in the center of the scaffold. The reason why I'm able to use the center function on the text directly is because we have made the extension on the base widget class. And in the end, every widget that we use in Flutter is inherited from this widget class. In the same way, we can create a new function that will scale the current widget. For this, I can create a new function that returns a widget and I'll name this scale evenly. And for the argument of this function, I'll pass in a double value of scale so that the user can pass in the amount of scale that they want for the widget. And in the body of this function, I'll return a transform widget and I'll use the scale constructor. And for the scale, I'll pass in the value of scale that is given by the user. And for the child, I'll pass in this. So to use this function, once again, I go to the main.dart file. And here I can directly use the scale evenly function on the text widget and I'll pass in the scale of 2.0. At this point, if I run the app, and here you can see that the text is now twice as big. With the help of this, you can see that you can write as many extensions as you want for the widget class, and they will all be applicable to all the widgets that you use in Flutter. One thing you should always keep in mind is that you should not use this extension feature extensively. Use this feature for only those widget wrappings which you think are being used quite often in your application. I highly encourage you to take a look at the documentation for this feature via the link in the description below. I think that this extension feature is one of the most useful features in Dart and this can help you in writing better and clean code. So I hope you find this video useful and if you do, please make sure to hit the like and subscribe button and also consider sharing this video with people who can benefit from the content that I create. See you next time. Peace.